Game development is often regarded as one of the trickiest areas of 3D, because many game development studios find themselves caught in the dilemma of how to produce visually stunning video games while also ensuring they are optimized for performance at the same time for different hardware, like the PlayStation, Xbox, and so on. However, it seems like the answer to this was found in a deceptively simple technique known as trim sheets. It is so important, in fact, that the entire ecosystem of modern game development could be very different without it. But what is it exactly, how is it used, and why is it an essential tool in game development? But before we continue, I want to remind you guys that we are going through the Black Friday to Cyber Monday sale. So this is a great opportunity to get yourself some of the best add-ons, courses, shaders, you name it. Especially on the Blender market, because they are having a big discount of up to 30% and other developers even more than that. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of the top Blender add-ons and courses that you will ever need. Without further ado, let's jump right into the video. For most game developers, one of the biggest concerns is about optimization. So anything that served as a step forward in this regard was tried and implemented. It is within this environment where trim sheets have become a fundamental aspect of game design because they address two major optimization issues, reducing the model's geometry and saving on texture memory, efficient way to make the most out of textures. Essentially, they are texture maps with an albedo, roughness and normals that can be broken down into sections and they can be tiled infinitely, at least in one direction. For example, a trim sheet can have a variety of surface details, like metal panels at the top section, pipes in the middle, and decorative sci-fi elements at the bottom. But this can extend to anything and everything, such as wood, fabric, concrete, and so on. These are typically used in making environments because they allow designers to pack multiple reusable details into a single texture map, which are then used to cover various surfaces in an environment. And they are often used to texture large pieces of geometry that can cover large surfaces in different environments. In other words, they are great for elements that don't need specific detailed customization, such as walls, floors, or terrains that just need a general pattern not a specific one. For example, think of a brick wall in a game. Instead of individually adding a texture to every part of that wall, you can just use the trim sheet to do that job for you. Besides, they often have more details and richness than regular textures. And since you will be using the same texture over and over again, the GPU only needs to save it once, which makes the rendering more efficient and easier to handle by your machine. And these days especially, when games are becoming bigger and more complex, the use of trim sheets has become essential for most studios. Because in many video games, and specifically their environments, which include levels of maps, they take up more than half of the screen. Meaning that this technique allows them to meet graphic standards while also managing the limitations of the hardware. And one of the best examples is found in The Last of Us Remake, as Matthew Trevely and John's Principal environment artist at Naughty Dog explained to AT Level, the use of baked bevel trims played an important role in helping the team to free up texture memory and reduce the amount of uniquely baked props, as well as lowering the reliance on uniquely based props and trims that didn't follow a shared layout. But it is important to note that trim sheets are still not a miraculous solution and they need to follow some rules to function properly. For instance, the trims shouldn't include large details like scratches, dirt, or smudges, as the tiling will become too noticeable and unnatural. And typically, they don't work well with organic objects, but they are a great fit for man-made objects when it is appropriate, such as in architecture 
or urban settings. Before we continue, I want to talk about Geometry.store, which is the online market for procedural high quality and customizable rail clone assets and libraries for 3ds Max. And Geometry just announced the launch of its new website, which is more secure, faster, and with an entirely brand new look. The main page is now cleaner, showcasing new features, bundles, and guides. While I like the shop's previews for all different products, it is simple and straight to the point. The new library function takes the cake. You can double click on any item in the library and it will open the web browser with the shop. And now, if you get a new item, you will download the whole library, enabling you to preview the whole models inside Max. Geometry also launched a free implementation for the Fusion plugin that will come with two packs. And although it doesn't need Rail Clone and has basic functionality compared to it, you will still get the same procedure experience. And it also comes with the same PBR materials Corona and V-Ray have. If you want to check out the store, follow the link in the description down below. And don't forget to use the Black Friday code BF2024 for some early deals. And now back to the video. Over the years, trim sheets have seen numerous variations, including techniques such as hotspot texturing and the ultimate trim technique from the 2014 action-adventure game Sunset Override by lead environment artist Martin Olsen and his team. This technique has since gained popularity and has been used in other Isomniac games with large open worlds, such as Marvel's Spider-Man, and it is used to add fake bevels to objects, and even takes it a step further by trying to make all the items in the game environment from small signs to entire buildings UV unwrapped into trim sheets and mapped to follow the trim layout. However, the concept of trim sheets doesn't seem to be credited to any person or studio, at least as far as I know. Instead, it is more of a collective effort that emerged out of a widespread need for better optimization when game environments become more complex, especially with the increase in detail and size of modern titles. With that being said, I think all of us can agree that mastering the art of trim sheets is an important step in creating an efficient and optimized video game. No doubt about that. But how do you do that in the first place? I mean, how do you make them? Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, but there is no definitive way to do so. And if you've ever tried making textures, you already know that there is a lot of ways to do so. But before we get into that, I think it is important to first identify the type of trim sheets you're gonna create starting with tiling trim sheets. And as the name suggests, these are more traditional type trim sheets, consisting of a pattern that can be repeated infinitely in one or more directions, which can for example be applied to walls, floors, ceilings, or even sci-fi patterns, like those used on walls in spaceships for example. Then there are hybrid trim sheets. Conceptually, they are not too different from your standard trim sheets, and the only difference is that part of the UV space is used to add uniquely detailed on tiling elements, which can help break up the repetition of the standard tiling trims or add specific details to a design. For example, you might add a door within a wall trim sheet. As I said, there isn't really one particular way to make trim sheets, because it all depends on who you ask. But at the core of it, there are two major ways to do so, especially in the industry. First, you have the manual methods, which we'll get into in a moment, and other people swear by proceduralism and prefer to create them mainly in Substance Designer. For starters, one of the most important steps in this process is planning your trim sheets. Well, it does depend on the artist and their preferences, but I would say a good practice is to sketch the design or gather a ton of references of what you want to create. After that, if you want to use Substance Designer, you can create trim sheets by combining nodes with each other. For example, for each section of the trim sheet, you can start with a basic shape like a circle, rectangle, or any complex shape that you can either import or create directly within the software using tools like spline nodes. On the other hand, you can use tile generator node to form a pattern. Then between these two, you can further develop the shape by adding powerful nodes like creating masks, blend modes, blurs, and so on. The good part about this workflow is that it is non-destructive, 
meaning you can change the detail of any of the nodes however you want, which can help in creating many variations or just having precise control to adjust the designs without having to start from scratch. The second workflow follows a more traditional 3D model creation process. It begins by modeling the trim sheets in software like Blender or Maya, then move on to sculpting the complex or stylized details in software such as ZBrush, and finally baking and texturing it in Substance Painter. But it really depends on the artist and the software they would like to use. Trim sheets may sound deceptively simple at first, but at the same time, that's exactly what makes them so powerful, because their simplicity lies in their efficiency without overcomplicating things, as they offer an easy and a simple, in addition to a straightforward and straight to the point solution to optimize video game projects, to make them playable for gamers and efficient to make for game developers. And there you have it guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, also please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.